The Kite Berry the snail was still asleep when Dolly the ladybird knocked on his window. Good morning, Berry. Let's make a kite. Dolly drew a kite and Berry cut it out. They decorated it with colourful ribbons and then they tied it to a long piece of string. Let's see if it flies, Dolly said. They took each other's hand and set off to fly their kite. But no matter how hard the two of them tried, the kite just wouldn't fly. I'll climb up this tree and try it from there. Maybe then it'll fly. Dolly explained, but the kite just fell to the ground again. All of a sudden, the wind blew up and carried the kite away and took Dolly with it. Berry, help! Berry climbed up the tree and grabbed Dolly's feet, but he couldn't pull her back, so now the two of them were flying. Balthazar the bee flew by. He caught hold of Berry's feet, but he couldn't pull the kite back either. So now the three of them were flying. Eddie the potato beetle was sitting on top of a pine tree. He caught Balthazar's feet. So now the four of them were flying. Leapy, help! Balthazar cried to the grasshopper, who was just hopping by. Leapy caught Eddie's feet, so now the five of them were flying. The wind got stronger and stronger. Flutter the butterfly flew by. She caught Leapy's feet, so now the six of them were flying. Stanley the stag beetle and Zephyr the dragonfly looked at their friends in despair. Oh dear, the wind's blowing us right into the forest. The kite got tangled in the top of a tall tree and they landed in the treetops. The wind died down and the sun came out. Berry gave the ladybird a worried look. Dolly, I can't fly. How am I going to get down from here? Don't worry, Berry. I'm sure we'll think of something. I know what to do. Jump into this blanket, Berry. Don't be afraid. You won't hurt yourself. Berry jumped down into the blanket and bounced back up in the air. Look at me. This is fun. We want to try. The others shouted. The little friends jumped up and down on the blanket until it got dark. Long after they were all in bed asleep, the wind blew up again and carried the kite far, far away. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Bicycle One summer day, a pigeon delivered a parcel to Berry and Dolly. 
It was quite a big parcel and wrapped in pretty red paper and tied with a blue ribbon. Dolly read the note attached. It's from the centipede. Hooray! He's coming to visit us soon and he sent us this present. To us? Berry asked. What do you mean? To me or you? It says in the letter that it's for us. It's a present for both of us, I suppose. That's silly, Berry argued. I'm sure it's meant to be for me because I was the one who found him in the snow last Christmas. But he stayed at my house. I looked after him and made him tea, Dolly replied. But I read him caterpillar stories from the story book, Berry added. The red wrapping paper wasn't that strong and it soon tore open. Wheels poked out from underneath. It's a bicycle, Berry exclaimed. It's just perfect for me. No, it's just perfect for me, Dolly insisted. All right, you can have the bicycle if you want it so much. I'll be the bigger person. You're behaving like a silly baby. That upset Berry. That's not fair. I'm going to be the bigger person and you're the silly baby. You can have the bicycle. In the end, neither of them took the bicycle. They walked away and left the half-unwrapped bicycle in the meadow. Not long after that, Balthazar the bee and Flutter the butterfly came by. What do you think it is? Is it a bicycle? Balthazar asked. Yes, it looks like it, Flutter replied. There's a note stuck to it. It's for Berry and Dolly from the centipede. Let's take it to them, Balthazar suggested. They touched the bicycle and the rest of the wrapping paper fell off. This made them laugh. Look, it's a tandem. Two people can ride it. Let's have a go, Balthazar said. Hello, Berry. Hello, Dolly. We brought you your bike. You left it in the meadow, Flutter shouted. Berry and Dolly came outside. They saw Flutter and Balthazar on the bicycle and felt very silly. Oh, it's a tandem. We can both sit on it. And we had such a fight about it. They made friends again and hugged each other happily. What a super present. We wasted all our time quarrelling and we haven't made anything for the centipede. He could arrive at any minute. Let's make him a colourful windmill. We can use pretty petals, Flutter suggested. Yes, that's a great idea, Berry and Dolly agreed. The four friends gathered red, purple, white, yellow and pink petals and made a windmill. Just then, the centipede arrived in a cart pulled by a mouse. The little mouse stopped in the meadow and the centipede climbed out. He gave Berry and Dolly a big hug. I see you got my present. I hope you like it. It's beautiful. We love it, Berry and Dolly said. And we made you this windmill. The centipede stayed with Berry and Dolly for ten whole days. They went for long rides on their bicycle. They played a lot. They had a very good time. But the happy days passed soon. I have to go home now. I've had such a super time here. Do come and visit us again next summer, Berry and Dolly said, as they waved goodbye to their friend. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The football match. One morning, Stanley was woken by the sound of someone knocking on his door. Stanley, it's me, Frank. The little stag beetle crawled out of his bed and saw Frank the longhorn beetle. Hello there, Frank. It's super to see you, Stanley said, and the old pals hugged. I brought this for you. A football hooray! We'll need 
teams to play a proper game, Frank reminded him. Then we'll tell the others to come and we'll have proper teams, the stag beetle suggested. The two boys called on all the others to come and play football with them. They visited every house, and by the time they had reached the edge of the forest, they had two teams. Alfonso agreed to be the referee. We should sew them football shirts, Rosita suggested. One team can play in blue and one team can play in red. The footballers spent the whole week training. We sewed these for you, Zephyr told them, and she handed the red and blue shirts to Stanley. Thank you, the two teams said together, and they slipped on their new football shirts. Dolly and Rosita set benches up, and the spectators all sat at the side of the pitch. Alfonso blew his referee's whistle, and the match began. That's it, run, Bubble, Stanley yelled. Here, pass it to me, Bubble shouted. Hooray! The blue team cheered as they all embraced. Come on, Reds! Come on, Blues! The crowd cheered. That's not fair, Frank. You can't touch the ball with your hand, the B-boy complained. Balthazar's right. Don't do it again, Frank. It's against the rules, the referee said. The match got very exciting. The Blues were leading three goals to two when the game stopped again. Frank tripped me up, Bubble complained. Yes, I saw that too, Alfonso agreed. I'll have to send you off if you break the rules again, Frank. Stanley's team looked set to win. Frank started to get crosser and crosser. I'm going to score a goal now, he shouted, and he pushed Berry so hard that they ended up falling over and Frank shouted out in pain. Ouch! My arm! The others all ran over. I'll run and fetch Dr Owl, Zephyr announced. If you hadn't hurt yourself so badly, I'd send you off, Alfonso said. Yes, I know, Frank said sadly, but my hand really hurts. Dr Owl was soon at the scene. Well, you've broken your arm. I'll have to put it in plaster and you'll have to keep it on for four weeks. You'll need to look after it and no running around. The blue team won the football match. We'll have to wait a while before we can play again. Stanley said, and he patted Frank on the back. Don't be sad, you'll soon be as fit as a fiddle again. I'm sorry that I broke the rules, Frank sniffed. I promise to play fairly when my arm has mended, and we can have another good game of football. I think we should all decorate Frank's plaster cast, Dolly said with a grin. Let's go back to my house for a snack. The big crowd of friends all piled into Dolly's spotty house. They got her crayons out and drew all kinds of funny things on the Longhorn Beetle's plaster. I'm going to keep it as a souvenir after Dr Owl takes it off, Frank told them all. Then all the friends sat around the table and ate every last piece of the delicious sponge roll. Today. The Little Bumblebee Early one morning, Berry, Dolly and Balthazar went out to play in the meadow. They wanted to try out the new parachute the little bee had made. But a little bumblebee was picking lilac flowers and singing a happy song. The winter's gone and it's the spring. Lilac is my favourite thing. Balthazar was the first to greet her. Hello, little bumblebee. My name's Balthazar. This is Berry the Snail and Dolly the Ladybird. Who are you? My name's Betty. I was flying home and I decided to stop and pick lilac flowers in the meadow. We're on our way to try this new parachute. Do you want to come with us? Balthazar asked. I'd love to. Balthazar and Betty were the first to jump and then the other friends tried the colourful parachute. 
They played until it got dark. Will you play with us again tomorrow? Balthazar asked excitedly. I can't. I have to leave early tomorrow morning. My home is far away from here and I still have a long way to go. So Berry, Dolly and Balthazar said goodbye to Betty. Balthazar looked very upset, so Dolly asked him, What's wrong? Balthazar's got a girlfriend, Berry laughed. Don't make fun of him, Berry, Dolly said angrily. You know what, Balthazar? Ask Betty to stay here. We can build her a house in the woods. That's a super idea. I'll go to the meadow tomorrow morning and ask her to stay. Balthazar, Dolly and Berry got up very early the next day. They hurried to the meadow to talk to Betty. But the friends were too late. The little bumblebee had already left. The only thing they found was a farewell note she'd left for them pinned to a tree. Balthazar sat down on the grass and started to cry. Berry didn't laugh at him this time. Let's go after her, the little snail said. I'm sure we can catch her up. Berry, you're such a slow snail. We'll never catch up with Betty if you don't hurry up. Berry was going to say something back to Balthazar when a hedgehog stepped out of the bushes. Perhaps I can help. No, I'm not too fast, but I'm sure I'm much faster than you three. The friends liked the idea. They built a little cart out of a horse chestnut shell and tied it to the hedgehog's spikes. The hedgehog cart was ready to roll. Let's rest a little while, Dolly suggested when it got dark. We'll carry on tomorrow morning. Balthazar started to cry again. We'll never find time. I can smell something sweet. It's lilac blossom. Lilac? Dolly wondered. But there aren't any lilac bushes around here. Let's look around. Would you like to come back and live with us? We could build you a little bumblebee house in a tree. You wouldn't have to fly back to your faraway home. We'd be so happy if you lived with us. That's a super idea. We'd all be very happy, Berry and Dolly nodded. Thank you. I'd love to come and live with you, Betty replied. She was happy. You came all this way to find me. That's so nice of you. They all jumped into the hedgehog cart and trundled back to the meadow. They started to build the house the very next morning. They built Betty a pretty tree house near the lilac field. When the bumblebee's house was ready, they had a big party. All the forest friends were invited. They danced and ate late into the night and made their new neighbour very welcome indeed. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Gingerbread. December had arrived and the forest was covered in a thick quilt of snow. Berry and Dolly were sitting chatting in the ladybird's dotty house. Let's bake some gingerbread biscuits, Dolly suggested with a bright smile. Berry and Dolly got to work in the kitchen. They bustled around in a cloud of spices and flour and rolled the biscuit dough out flat on the table. Dolly got all the gingerbread cutters out of the drawer. They cut lots of different shapes out and popped the biscuits in the oven to bake. When the biscuits were cooked to a crunchy crisp, Dolly took them out of the oven and put them in a pretty bowl. Then she carefully placed the bowl outside in the snow. These hot biscuits will soon cool down in the winter chill, she told Berry. Just then, a magpie flew over the house. He could smell the delicious gingerbread biscuits and he swooped down and carried the lot off in his big beak. When Dolly came out later, the bowl and biscuits had completely disappeared. Oh dear, someone's taken my yummy biscuits, she shrieked. 
But who could have taken the bowl? Berry asked. Berry and Dolly decided to go and search in the forest. The first friend they ran into was Iris the Ice Beetle. Oh, Iris, someone has taken my yellow bowl full of fresh gingerbread biscuits. You didn't see who it was, did you? Dolly asked. Yes, I did. It was the magpie. He flew off in that direction. They kept walking until they met the grub. Hello, grub. The magpie took my yellow bowl filled with gingerbread biscuits. Did you see which way he flew? The grub pointed. Not long after, Berry and Dolly caught sight of Bubble and Eddie, who were building a snowman. Have you seen the magpie? He took my yellow bowl and all our gingerbread, Dolly complained. Yes, we saw him. He flew towards the stream. The potato beetle replied. Look, Dolly, fresh biscuit crumbs. The magpie must have flown this way, Berry suddenly shouted. If we follow the trail, it should take us to the magpie's nest, Dolly proposed. The pair of them followed the trail of crumbs and it took them all the way to the magpie's nest and to the sweet smell of gingerbread. Berry and Dolly climbed up the tree and knocked on the magpie's door. Did you take my yellow bowl filled with fresh gingerbread? Dolly asked as soon as the magpie opened the door. Yes, it was me. I was very hungry. I saw the bowl sitting there, so I took it. But I can give it back to you. It's not nice to take what belongs to somebody else, Dolly said and marched back to her house in a grumpy mood. Berry did his best to keep up with the little ladybird. Don't be angry, Dolly. I know that the magpie took your bowl, but he gave it back, and I'm certain that he'll apologise, the little snail said. Berry and Dolly invited their friends over that afternoon. Flutter the butterfly, Balthazar the bee, and Stanley the stag beetle all came around for tea. They all sat at the table and began to eat. It wasn't long after that they heard a soft knock on the front door. Dolly opened the door. The magpie was standing outside and looking very ashamed of himself. I brought you some rosehip cordial. I made it myself. Please take it as a gift to say how sorry I am for pinching your gingerbread, the magpie said. Why don't you come in and join us for a bite to eat, magpie? There's plenty of room for you at our table. This made the magpie very happy. The friends sat around the table, munching on delicious gingerbread biscuits and sipping fresh rosehip cordial. They chatted and laughed late into the night. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Friends. It was a super sunny day and Dolly the ladybird sat staring out of the window. I'm going to eat breakfast she thought, and then I'll go for a walk in the meadow. She decided to take her wheelbarrow with her. I wonder if I'll find something interesting to take home in my wheelbarrow, she thought to herself. Goodness me, said Dolly. What a lovely red cherry. That's just perfect for my lunch. She tried to lift the cherry into her wheelbarrow, but it was far too heavy. Too heavy for one little ladybird. Just then, Berry the snail appeared. Why the sad face, ladybird? asked Berry. I can't lift this cherry into my wheelbarrow, Dolly replied. Don't cry, I'll help you, Berry said with a smile. And the two of them picked the cherry up with no trouble at all. Dolly set straight off home with the juicy cherry. Now it was Berry who looked sad. Don't you want to share the cherry with me, the snail said and stamped his little foot. I did help you. But I found it first, 
Dolly snapped. You're not having any. It's mine. Berry was very upset. The two of them started to fight over the cherry. It's mine! It's mine! shouted Dolly. That's not fair! Berry shouted back. They pushed and pulled the cherry until it split in two. Berry and Dolly plopped to the ground. They were very surprised when a green grub crawled out of the cherry. What have you done to my cherry? he grumbled. That cherry was my home! Oh, don't look so upset, the grub said. I know where we can find plenty more. You can eat cherries while I find a new home for myself. Dolly helped the grub into her wheelbarrow and they all set off to look for the cherry tree. When they arrived, they found the ground around the cherry tree was covered in ripe red fruit. Berry and Dolly jumped for joy. The grub fell fast asleep while Berry and Dolly munched away on fresh cherries and the time soon flew by. It was getting late, so they decided to go home, but this time with two cherries. One for Dolly and one for Berry. The sun was setting by the time they reached Berry's house. They took his cherry out of the wheelbarrow and said goodbye. Berry went inside and waved to Dolly from the window. Berry soon fell fast asleep after such an exciting day. The little snail dreamt about playing in cherries with Dolly and eating until their tummies were full. Then Dolly got back home and went straight to bed. From that day on, Berry and Dolly were the best of friends. The Missing Nuts Hello, Berry. Hurry up. Let's go and see Reggie Squirrel. We really should say goodbye to him before he hibernates for winter, Dolly the Ladybird said. Berry put on his hat, scarf and gloves and the two friends made their way to Reggie Squirrel's home. Their friend the squirrel was sitting on a branch in front of his home. We wanted to say goodbye before you snuggle up to sleep through the chilly winter. Why don't you come up for a glass of juice and a quick nut snack, Reggie suggested. Look at all the yummy food I've gathered for winter. My pantry's full. But the pantry was empty. Oh my, where have all my hazelnuts and walnuts gone? Where are my delicious pine cones, acorns and raisins? I think this might be where the nuts rolled out, Berry said, pointing to a little hole in the corner of the pantry. Someone's been chewing the tree trunk, Dolly said in surprise. And I think I know who it was, the little snail added. Don't worry, Reggie, we'll catch the troublemakers and find your nuts. And don't forget the pine cones and acorns too, the squirrel added. The two friends headed towards the big meadow. They heard loud laughter as they got closer. I knew it was them. They're always getting into some sort of trouble, Dolly whispered to Berry. I'm sure they're doing something naughty right now, Berry added. Someone chewed a hole in Reggie Squirrel's tree trunk right outside his pantry. And now all of his nuts are missing. It was you lot, wasn't it? But we didn't mean any harm. We were just chewing the bark like we always do. And we didn't know that his pantry was on the other side, the smallest bark beetle explained. What can we do to help? 
Come with us and we'll find the nuts that rolled away. We haven't got that much time. It could start to snow at any minute. We'll never be able to find his food in the snow, so hurry. They all took a close look at the tree trunk. The nuts all rolled out here and then they fell to the ground and carried on rolling down the hill, Reggie explained. The gang of friends found Reggie's goodies in a pile at the bottom of the hill. Hooray! Reggie shouted with delight. Would you please bring all the food back to my home while I patch the hole up in my pantry? Reggie told the bark beetles. They carefully placed the hazelnuts, walnuts and acorns back in his pantry. Berry and Dolly gave them a hand. They worked as fast as they could, but it got dark very quickly and they still had a huge stack left at the bottom of the hill. We'll never finish in time, one of the bark beetles sighed. We could really use some extra help, another added. Berry the snail suddenly sprang to his feet and left in a hurry without saying a word. He was soon back and had a trumpet in his hand. He blew it so loudly that everybody could hear it. Soon all the friends in the forest gathered. Dolly climbed up on a big boulder and told them all what had happened to Reggie Squirrel's winter food supply. All the nuts rolled out of the hole. We've got to take the food back to Reggie's home. If you all help, it can be done before dark. Ready, set, go, Berry said, and he lifted a nut from the pile. He gave it to Dolly. She handed it to one of the bark beetles. The bark beetle gave it to the bee. The bee handed it to the dragonfly. And so it moved back up the hill to the squirrel's pantry. By the time the moon appeared in the sky, all the hazelnuts, acorns, walnuts and chestnuts were safely stowed away in Reggie Squirrel's winter home. Reggie happily put the last nut back in his packed pantry. Thank you. I'm so glad I've got so many good friends. It's time for me to tuck myself up in bed before it starts snowing. See you again in spring. The grateful squirrel yawned. The Scooter One spring morning, Morris the Maybug decided to make himself a scooter. He spent the whole day sawing, drilling and hammering. And when he was finished, he painted the scooter black. Then he hurried to show his super scooter to his friends. The boys were all playing basketball in the meadow. Berry, Stanley, Balthazar, Eddie, Bubble and Alfonso. Look at my new scooter. I made it all myself. Can I have a try? No one can borrow it. It's mine. I only want to try it for a minute. We'd like to have a go on it too, then we'll give it back. I'm not lending it to anyone, Morris told them again. The boys were so busy arguing that they didn't spot Eddie, who grabbed the scooter and rode off on it. Stop! Bring it back! It's my scooter and I didn't lend it to you! I'm not lending it to anyone! Eddie slowed down and Morris soon caught up with him. Give me my scooter back! Here you are, it doesn't go fast enough anyway. Not fast enough? Look at this! Not fast enough? You can hardly keep up with me! He shouted with a laugh but he didn't see a big pothole in the middle of the road. Watch out, Morris! Balthazar, Berry and Stanley all shouted at once, but it was too late. Well, you've only got yourself to blame, Morris, Balthazar said in a snooty tone. What happened, Morris? Are you badly scratched? Why aren't you boys helping him? The rose beetle asked the others. It's all Morris's fault! It doesn't matter how it happened. He's really hurt himself and you should have helped. Come back to my house, Morris, and I'll clean those nasty scratches for you. Rosita sat Morris down and washed his wounds with a warm, wet cloth. It doesn't look that bad now. Morris started to sob. It was all my fault because I was mean to the others. If I hadn't been so mean, it wouldn't have happened. Then don't be mean next time. 
thank you for all your help, Morris said as he left. It was nothing. You'll feel better soon. Morris limped all the way back to his house. The minute he got home, he jumped into bed and he was soon fast asleep. The little Maybug woke up the next morning with a wonderful idea. He got out his paints and brushes. I'm going to paint you pink. Look at you! I've brought this for you. Thank you for helping me yesterday. It looks lovely. Did you paint it? Rosita asked. Yes, I thought you wouldn't like it black. I love it. I'm going to ride it over to Dolly's house. Be careful, have a safe ride. Morris walked home and he was about to eat his lunch when he heard a knock at the door. Hello, Morris, Balthazar said first. We came to see if you're feeling better. Much better, thank you, Morris shrugged. I promise that I won't take your scooter again, Eddie said with an apologetic smile. I haven't got it anymore. I painted it pink and gave it to Rosita. But I can make a new scooter, Morris said. I promised Rosita that I won't be mean again. Everyone can have a go on my new scooter when it's finished. Hooray! Bubble shouted. Now would you all like a piece of apple pie? I baked it myself. Morris soon finished the new scooter. He painted it dark green. All the friends gathered in the meadow the next day and took turns to have a go on the two scooters. <laughs>